who have missed out on joy in life. Just missed it completely. It just sort of went by without you seeing it. In our gospel reading, the prodigal son, there's some persistent questions. I know there are a lot of folks who, who, have, a, who have a lot of trouble with the story of the prodigal son. You know, the kid goes away and he comes back and he gets, his dad takes him back in. But there's a question that a lot of people try to figure out and get beneath the surface. Did the younger son repent before going home and experiencing his father's forgiveness or after? I mean, he was just hoping for a job. What had happened in here? The younger son clearly missed out on the joy that was already there. The thing is, the older son did too. That's how the story ends. That's why part two, where the older son is out in the field and refusing to come in, you know, kind of a heroic moment, is so integral to the story. This psalm moves through different phases. Verses one and two talk about being blessed or happy. And then three and four, silence and body wasting away. It's all about the struggles. Then five, we have confession. Six is an affirmation of God's care. And then in eight and nine, we get some instruction from the Lord. And then finally, at the end, the congregation offers praise. It's a, a sort of a flow to this psalm. Someone said to me one time uh, something like, preaching from the psalms is like preaching from the hymnal. There's nothing there. I, I, I think it was the older son who said that. It was a, you know, someone who had been in the church forever, and it's like, how, how, did, how are you missing this? This is a powerful story of redemption, of God's grace, God being a part of things throughout. This story connects happiness to being forgiven. I, I can't help but wonder if the people who arranged the lectionary that we sort of follow most of the time had that in mind when they put it alongside the story of the prodigal son. <clears throat> Happiness is in being forgiven. There's a famous quote, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. It's often misattributed to John Lennon. John Lennon didn't write it. He read it in Reader's Digest in 1957, or at least that's when it was published first. He wrote it in a song later. But it's true. Life moves very quickly. And too often, we get caught up in the push of life. We get caught up in the, 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 all of the, the busyness of, of raising children or of working in a career or whatever, a project. And when we're so focused, we miss out on what's happening all around us. And this is where the psalmist really gets us. Happiness is being forgiven. True happiness is in being in a relationship, a right relationship with God. That's why the invitation to the table isn't just some words that remind us of why we're doing this. The invitation to the table, when we take our Lord's Supper, is one that, that takes us back to why is it that we do this? Why do we come to church? Why do we gather at the table? Why do we go through any of these steps in the process? I looked around to see how different people define specifically outside the church, I would gone beyond the Psalms and the commentaries. Now this past week, for those of you who are on Facebook or social media, you would have seen the video that I shared of the modern retelling, Facebook retelling of the, uh, the prodigal son story. And if you go back to the YouTube channel for our church later, right here, is going to be a link to it. <laughs> okay, I made it in the frame, I wasn't sure. We're going to put a link to that in the, in the, in the video on, on YouTube later. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's one of the interesting parts of the video is the likes. If, you, if you're not a Facebook person, people can click like on things that I guess they like, presumably, or are okay with, or love, or whatever. But you click like, and so the, people perceive happiness in a certain way. When the son had money and was able to. to entertained his friends, he kept getting all these likes on his posts. He got more friend requests. 
He got all these things. All the comments were, woohoo, party at your place. You know, you're buying, awesome. And it was this, he had friends, interactions, affirmation, and, and he thought that people really loved him. And as soon as the cash dried up, he found out that this was all temporary pot, something that couldn't last. And happiness is about more than money, parties. There's some good definitions out there. Happiness is when your life fulfills your needs. And I'm telling you, I know a lot of people who truly have everything they need and couldn't be further from happiness. I, I see that again and again. And you, you don't have to take my word for it. Open any newspaper and you see people all the time who have got it all. They've got money, houses, what they, 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 their lives truly fulfill their needs. But somehow they found themselves in the newspaper for embezzlement, fraud, or other crimes, or they, they're caught up in a scandal, all kinds of things. Another place I saw that said happiness is when you feel fulfilled. It's a feeling of contentment. You know, one place we really can find that is when we gather in the presence of the Lord. And, and I don't think this is just church talk. I mean, obviously you'd expect to hear that when you come to church. Or if you're driving somewhere right now and your radio's broken and it's stuck on 101.7 and it's stuck in the out position, so you have to be listening to this. You'd expect a live broadcast of a worship service to say, for the preacher to say, happiness is being in the presence of God. But it's true. I don't say it because it's church talk. I say it because when we gather around this table and we get together in our Lord's presence, we find something much more powerful. We find the reality of, of God who loves us no matter if we did stray like the younger son or if we've been the older son who just keep missing the point again and again and again. Happiness is in the Lord. Life is a journey and it's important for us to understand that we can God. And that when we are, and we truly and humbly seek God, we get to have a better and clearer understanding of what fulfillment looks like, what contentment looks like. Some people approach each stage of life with a singular focus. You know, it's, uh, I'll, I'll start with the earlier stages, students. We've got some students here together today. Students uh, sometimes miss out on the joy of learning something new. And instead, you, you want to get a good grade. Why do you want to get a good grade? Get good grades. To get into a good college. Why do you want to get into a good college? To get a good job. That this approach to life, where it's always the goal, doesn't suddenly shift after college. It continues. People try to work hard in order to get a promotion work hard to get that raise in order to get a good retirement. And these things aren't bad, but they can distract us from God. Recall last week I shared a, a story that Tony Campolo shared about a study of 50 people over the age of 95. And he asked these folks, uh, as they look back over their life, what they would do differently if they had their life to, to live over again. And when you get to be 95, you get some say-so in that sort of thing. To have a certain Every one of them said they would risk more, take more chances. They would reflect more, spend more time in reflection, and do things that would live on after they were dead. The psalmist writes, happy are those who are forgiven. True happiness is related to forgiveness. The psalmist also writes, happy are those in whose spirit there is no deceit. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but as you Maybe metaphorically gather around this table and you get into this sort of very spiritual mode where you're focused on God and you're thinking about our, our Lord and the Last Supper and, and, and it becomes a very tangible awareness of God's presence. All of a sudden we become tuned in to the fact that God knows every part of us and can see every part of us. And it's sort of like it's hard in that moment to hold on as we, we seek God.
God more and seek in more earnestly. Just deliberate action. It becomes harder to hold up. And the psalmist is talking about that. Happy are those in whose spirit there is no deceit. <coughs> Where is happiness? Is it found in grades or promotions or raises or retirement? In every moment, we can take the instruction that we find in verses 8 and 9. Don't be like the horse or the mule without understanding. Be glad in the Lord. And as each one of us wrestles with where we are on our life's journey, where we are in relation to God, and as we think about where we are today, we can consider this a metaphor of the bit in the mouth of the horse. James 3.3 3 says if we put bits in the mouths of horses, we can make them obey us and guide their whole bodies. We've got some equestrians here, I know. Is, is that true? The horse you can direct with the bit in the mouth of the horse. What guides us? What creates joy in our lives? Do we seek God's wisdom? Or do we miss the moment? Goals are good. They help us reach a place and point. And they can, they can help us get there. But they can't define us. We need to try to find God's grace and mercy in every moment. Try to seek God and take that awareness of forgiveness with us wherever we go. And find our happiness, our joy, in the loving arms of the God who, who is always with us. God loves each one of you and wants to continue to build you.